Hello and welcome to the Kaloon DC Concert demo video where I'll be showing you some of the features in this software so you can get going and making some music. Um, so what you here have here is a sequencer that you can dial in different patterns on this matrix object by coloring in these dots. Each dot represents a Kalundi note, which is can be heard by the number box uh, that rep is represented in that row. You can audition the frequencies that you will be uh, sequencing in the uh, matrix object by clicking on these number boxes. Okay. Um, down here we have your preset section so we can quickly load in one of the two presets that has been uh, ship with the software. Uh, you can start and stop playback by using this button here or your spacebar. Now to affect playback mode you have uh, different uh, settings down here such as the length of the pattern which can be 8, 16, 24, 32 beats or steps. Here you have the quantization of each one of these notes, so uh, they can either be 8th notes, 16th, 24th, 32 notes, and here you have your uh, tempo BPM. Um, on the right hand side here, we have uh, where you can control your presets. To select a preset, just click on one of these uh, colored boxes. If there is no highlights or a different color in these boxes, that means there is no preset there. If you wish to store a preset, you press shift and then click and you will see there is now a new preset saved. In order to edit this preset, you can click on it and it will be highlighted. Uh, you can make edits. Once you finish making your edits, don't forget to do shift and click. And uh, once you close your program, to make sure you don't lose any of these presets, you click the Save button and save the preset file. Either it has the standard preset file I've already included, or if you want to add your own preset file and create a new one, just give it a new name. Um, in case uh, you want to delete all the presets that are currently stored in the patch, you can click Clear All. Um, or if you accidentally click that button and wish to recover the presets you'd already saved, you click the load button, find the file where you uh, save the presets as, or in the folder where the app is located, and it'll load them back up. If you want to delete just one preset, let's say we've saved preset number three incorrectly, you select it, and down here you make sure this number says preset 3 and you can just clear one. Now let's listen to what we have here. Okay, so we have a pattern going. Let's say we want to change the sound a bit. We will go to our mixer section and we will have this new window pop up where you will see the control for the FM synthesizer section where you can add plugins such as reverb or any other of your favorite plugins and they will be loaded automatically into this menu if you have them saved in your uh, normal folders uh, furthermore if you want to add any other sort of VSTs you can do so here I sometimes like jamming around with this and my machine so you can just find your native instruments machine there and accompany it with some beats um, these are two behave as two individual instruments uh, routed into this master plugin section. So any plugin you put in here will affect both the, the VST and the FM synth. And over here you have a quick little mixer section where you can just balance out the FM synth and the VST volumes and your master volume. Um, to affect the sound that we're currently hearing, uh, which is generated by the FM synthesizer, in the section you have a modulation index and an envelope section. Okay, so you can change the shapes of these 
these envelopes by adding a different node just by clicking. If you want to delete a node, do shift click. You can change the length or release, uh, which is in milliseconds. So let's say 6000. Harmonicity of the FM synthesis. Synth voices and voice steel behavior. And if this is the sound you were looking for, don't forget to save your preset, save, and save your preset file or just replace the current one there. Okay, so that will, is enough to get you making some sound. So now let's see about your sound card settings. So clicking the settings option here, you will see this window pop up where you will have all the audio drivers and inputs and outputs automatically loaded. If for any reason you don't find what you're looking for, you can click on these buttons to reload the different drivers and settings. You have your audio drivers here, followed by your input settings, such as built-in microphone, or in this case I've got sound flower running in the back, and your output settings as well, so you can control these independently. Uh, here are the individual input channels, so you can assign these as well as you wish if you have many inputs and outputs, such as in the Soundflower 64. You can see them show up here. And finally in this section we have uh, the option of uh, tying this to your DAW by clicking on this first external MIDI uh, toggle button, which turns it on, and then you can select uh, the the source of the external MIDI. So for any purposes where we're tying it to say Ableton Live or Logic, you will select here to Kalundi Sequencer 1. Then once this is already set, you will go to your DAW, in this case I use Logic and it's the one I've tested it out with, and you will have to change a number of settings. In order to sync with uh, the Kalundi Sequencer, you will do, go to your preferences, MIDI, sync, MIDI sync project settings, and here in your transmit MIDI clock destination, you will tick one box and send it to Kalundi sequencer one. Okay. So now we will see that when we click our transport in logic, you will see the Kalundi sequencer activate. Okay. You can see the transport going there in the back. Okay. Now, uh, whenever you make any changes here in the audio and MIDI settings. Uh, if you don't have any sound, make sure to toggle this X button again and it'll bring it back. So now, uh, when we play from Logic, we will hear it coming from the Kalundi sequencer. Using the looping uh, mechanism in Logic, you can uh, time the sequence to start at any particular point. It'll always trigger from the beginning of your pattern, so... This is great if you just want to start recording in, into a particular section of your project. So, in order to route the audio directly into Logic, if we wanted to record it, we will be able to do that by our audio MIDI settings changing our output to something such as Soundflower, going to our Logic, back to our audio settings, 
input device sound flower and now make sure once you change your output settings to toggle this on and off and now we will get sound straight into logic That is all for the Kalundi sequencer. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.